things that I noticed when I moved these wooden slats is that this top one didn't really fit the other two. So I'm going to take the edges off and just see if I can get a better fit. Uh, unscrew them here and here, get it positioned and then screw it up freshly in a different place so that it fits more simply. shoot their leaves and that means that I really need to get this side of the shed stained the other sides can wait because they can be done at any time but the longer I leave this side the more I risk damaging the leaves on these blackcurrant bushes so I'm gonna get on with that I was looking at the shed the other day and I notice this board, and this is like a shiplap, but obviously one edge is broken off and as it's dried out in the sunshine that we've had, so it's curving out. So I think I'm gonna need to put a piece of wood all along there because if the rain comes down and runs down the side, it's gonna go straight into the shed. So I'm gonna do some running repairs on that before I get to staining the side of this. So as this shed deteriorates, and it is, it's been here a long time and it was second hand already, I need to find a way of revamping it. And these slats face fixed onto the existing boards look like a really good way forward and effectively I'll have a double skin on the shed uh, when I eventually need to cover more of it. This is the bed that dried up last year and I was worried that the rhubarb had died. And this year it's coming through nicely so it certainly didn't die but I need to keep watering it to make sure that it doesn't dry up again. So I've been pretty astounded with the resilience of rhubarb I mean, literally all the leaves died back and I thought they'd had their day. But just looking at it today, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven leaves coming up in different locations with different rhubarb corns. So I'm really happy it's found its way through that dry spell and I'll pay better attention this year. I've got some thin strips of membrane required on the fruit garden and this one is badly frayed so I'm going to lift this now and then I'll cut down that edge with the blowtorch and try and seal the edge and then I can use this more productively up on the fruit garden. So I'm going to reveal this now and I probably won't do a lot more with it uh, for a few days but it does release this membrane for me.
eventually the bed will just need raking over and it'll be ready for planting. So this space is where I plan to put the downpipe into the water butt on the stand that I've stained. So the water butt used to stand here. I've turned the water pipe out and now I just need to cut a square into here and then I can put the stand in its place and the water butt on top and we'll be back to collecting water. And then ultimately I may well join that system so that I have a waterer inside the run for the chickens that are in here. That's a way off yet, but I need to get this cut in and get the water butt in place. So that went in nicely. I may have to change how the pipe works, but I'll do that later. And uh, that's back collecting water. So this soil now is pretty much like compost. There's clearly still going to be weed in there, but most of the large bits of stone and clay have been taken out and there's still clumpy stuff underneath but this is going to give a great surface to plant into and now i'm just going to rake through and get it level This coarse material that's now in the barrow, I'm going to use that behind the uh, shed where I've put the run. There was definitely a collection of water while I was digging the trench. And I'm thinking of digging a new trench away from it and filling it with rubble. And this would be as good as I need. So it's going to be taken over the other end and left in a pile ready for when I do that job today. I'm quite pleased with what I've done. The bed is looking really well prepared and I'm going to need that surface very soon to bring these seeds down so that I can sow more seeds along the bench. I need to fix something underneath these two down bars because those supports keep moving as I'm working the soil and I need to get that sorted otherwise I'll end up one of these days with lots of seeds on top of me not a good idea so my next job in here is to get that out and fill that with soil and I'm going to need the soil from there and I'm going to take the surround and put it on top there so it'll be a lot of the soil that I used last year that was now spent compost and I'll fill as much of that as I need and then any of that spent compost that's left over will either go into another carrot bin, which I'll make, or onto the bed. So we'll just see how I get on over here first. And that's a job for another day.
conscious that as I add fruit to this new fruit garden, that if I lose a label or there's something that I'm just committing to memory at the moment, then later on I'm going to forget what the variety of fruit is. So I'm going to make a plan, just simple, on a rough bit of paper, and then I'll transfer it onto something more permanent when I'm at home. But it'll just help me in the future just to remember what varieties are what, and if there's a fruit that I really like, then I know that in the future if I want another one of those bushes I know what to get. Today I'm going to fill this raised bed, being made out of individual or oh, four inch raised beds into one tower. I'm going to add that tower to the top, but I'm going to fill this now with spent compost from previous years. I'll get this parsley out and this is going to be the carrot bed over the coming season. So with no further ado, I'm going to start getting that plant out and getting the spent soil into the tower. So the tower has been de-weeded now and if you ever thought that cooch grass wasn't invasive just take a look at this all that came out the bottom of that raised bed and it just goes to show you're growing on top thinking everything's okay and that was underneath so it's been a good opportunity to clear all that out and within here there's quite a few stones and hard pieces of rock and hard pieces of clay and bearing in mind I'm going to grow carrots in here carrots notoriously need their roots to go straight down and if they hit something like that then that can cause problems in terms of a straight root so I'm going to just give that a quick sieve and we'll go from there So that's a lot better. The soil in there now is nice and fine and as the roots go down and they might not get down that low but if they do they won't hit a rock. So that's been screened now and is looking good but it is incredibly dry because this hasn't been watered throughout the winter so before I start adding anything on the top I'm going to water this in. My next step is to screen this soil that's going to come out of this bed. It's the same soil as is in here, so I'm going to keep it all together and just sieve it as I go, get down to a level where I'm happy that I'm going to be able to put a membrane across. And of course, that 
raised bed will then come over and make this tower that bit higher. So I'm going to get on and screen this soil. It's a bit of a judgment call now getting that to the right level. It's probably just a little bit low, but I can soon add something on top if I need to. And then this is something extremely satisfying about pushing over a mound of soft soil like that. And there we go. That's looking very, very nice. And I'll need to give this a water, just like I gave the lower level of water. Carrots should grow nicely into that. So this is quite a rich layer in this compost. There's quite a lot of chicken manure and the carrots that I'm going to grow are sweet candle. And that particular variety is not excessively deep, not excessively long. And therefore, once I filled this up to the top, the idea is that the carrot root will plunge down looking for goodness and this is the material they'll get and if they go down any further well that's fine they'll go down for moisture but the carrot is not going to be a really long one and maybe another year I'll grow something longer like the third raised bed that I put in I had to adjust this one's exactly the same so I'm going to need to make some adjustments to the edges so that we get a nice tight fit rather than all these gaps and I can't go a lot further with the soil content until I fix that so that job's next on my list. So the last layer in this tower is spent potato compost from last year and that would have lost the vast majority of its goodness and that lives on top and that's as high as I'm going to go and we'll soon be getting the carrots sewn into there and getting them underway. So I've been looking forward to this moment. I've got a bit of extra space. This is where I'm going to be putting the tomatoes. And now's the moment when I can get the strawberries up onto some of the bars to make even more space. And that will give me loads of working room. And I'm getting close then to my final layout. So, with no further ado, I'm going to do a bit of moving around. Where these hooks touch the polythene, I've got to be careful that they don't damage the polytunnel. So I'm going to use some of this hot tape, and this tape is recommended for putting onto the bars where you've got the metal touching the polythene and that cushions the contact point and it also prevents getting a hot spot. So I'm going to use some of this in a couple of locations so that I don't get that occurring where I've got these hooks from the hanging baskets. Thank you. 
this is a ceremonial square this is the last square on this plot that I'm digging to plant in plant into so there's still the path down the middle but that's just leveling this is weeding and digging and that's the very last nine inches by nine inches <laughs> a fairly cool and foggy morning in South Wales this morning. The fog was pretty dense first thing and now it's starting to clear a little. Today's a fairly significant day for me on the plot. I'm hoping to finish the fruit planting which I've been building up to with all the digging that's been done over the past months. So the weeding's now completed in all the areas that I need it to be. Yesterday I finished this area and now we're flat and weeded throughout the two sections in the plot. And the middle section, which will be a path, I'll get to in due course. I filled these apple beds or tree beds with the excess soil that came out of the humps and bumps of the plot and we're going to grow various flowers in those underneath the trees that's the plan so today i need to cut the membrane and lay it across this soil i'm going to leave this section free and we're going to put flowers in there um, so really I've got a section to go in here and hopefully we'll keep that middle section with the membrane that's already on there. I'll lift that and level the path later. And then it's about choosing what goes into the various locations. And at the moment my mindset is that the water is always going to run down to the lower edge and therefore the rhubarbs ought to be on the lower edge and the other plants can be further up and this is the poorest quality soil along here it's shallow and there's a lot of clay under there some of which I've taken out but it's always going to be there so on with the membrane a bit of a change of plan whilst I'd love to get these fruit bushes into the ground it's clear that whilst the edges of these membranes are not secure I could make a real botch when I cut and dig into them so I don't think there's any choice really other than getting this path level so that I can put the membrane in here fix it to all the edges and then I've got a taut membrane to cut the holes in and plant in the bushes so i might have to wait a couple more days but i'm sure it'll be worth it in the end i do hope you enjoyed the video today if you did click the subscribe button click the like button and if you want updates from me each time i upload a video click the bell and select all i do hope you have a great day Diochenbach.